Plaque building up in your arteries is the main drive of heart disease, the world's top killer, and a groundbreaking new study has revealed that an exercise routine can actually reverse this deadly buildup, dramatically lowering your heart disease risk. So in this video, I'll explain the findings of this new study and detail the exercise program that produced these exciting results. But I'll also reveal additional research-backed strategies that I share with my patients at the clinic to help you slash your risks even further. We've known for decades that exercising can help keep our heart healthy. It helps with things that cause heart problems, like being too heavy and having high blood pressure. But one of the most important risk factors for heart disease and strokes is the buildup of plaque inside our arteries. So does exercise help with that? We didn't know until this new study gave us remarkable results. It provides strong evidence that a certain kind of exercise program can reverse this plaque buildup. So what is this exercise and how effective was it? Well, here's how the study was set up. They looked at two groups of people over a period of six months. The people involved in the study were part of a high-risk group, so they had already had a significant amount of plaque buildup in their arteries. One group was given the standard lifestyle advice for lowering their risk of heart disease, so that included things like eating a healthy diet, not smoking, getting regular exercise, and aiming for a target blood pressure. The other group was given this advice, but they were also instructed to perform high-intensity interval training workouts, or HIIT workouts, twice a week. The study participants would begin each session with a 10-minute warm-up at moderate intensity. Then they would do 4 minutes of high-intensity exercise at about 85-95% to of their peak heart rate. This was followed by 3 minutes of moderate exercise for recovery. They then cycled through these intervals of high and moderate activity four times. Each exercise session ended with a five minute cool down. This group was also encouraged to do more exercise at home, including extra HIIT workouts. So what happened? Well, after six months, the scientists measured how much plaque was in the arteries of the people in the study and compared it to the measurements that they took at the beginning of the trial. They used special tools to get very accurate measurements. It turned out that the group that wasn't doing the high intensity workouts actually saw a slight increase in their plaque buildup. However, the group doing the HIIT workouts reduced their plaque volume by just over 1%, so from 49.5 to 48.3. That's an incredibly exciting finding. It shows us that exercise can reduce the volume of plaque in our arteries. But you're probably wondering, is 1% really something to get excited about? Does that much of a change actually matter? Another way to think of that question is this. If a person lowers their plaque volume by 1%, does that reduce their risk of heart attack or a stroke? Ideally, we would want a direct answer to that question, where the study would continue for a period of a few years, so we could actually see where the heart attack and stroke rates would decrease. Unfortunately, we don't have that data, but there is an indirect way to approach that question that gives us a pretty good idea of the answer. We have a separate, comprehensive meta-analysis that looked at 23 different studies about reducing arterial plaque. These studies used different strategies other than high-intensity interval training workouts that included a total of 7,000 people. That analysis found that a 1% reduction in plaque volume resulted in a staggering 25% decrease in the risk of heart attacks or strokes. That gives us great reason to hope for similar results from high intensity interval training. So even though it's not completely proven, it's very likely that lowering plaque volume by 1% through high intensity interval training workouts can make a big difference in terms of our heart risks. But there's an important question that we should ask about a result like this. How do we know that it was the exercise that reduced the plaque? After all, the participants in the study were also using medications that lowered their LDL cholesterol, and lowering LDL cholesterol levels can lead to a decrease in plaque volume. So if there was a decrease in LDL levels in the high-intensity interval workout, couldn't it be that that caused the shrinkage in plaque? But in this case, we can rule that out. Here's why. LDL levels were tested at the very beginning of the six-month study, and they were unchanged. So were the ApoB levels. So overall, it's highly likely that it was the exercise itself that's responsible for the reduced plaque rather than any other factor. But the key is getting exercise right, which is more difficult than it sounds. Let me explain. 
A separate study found that vigorous exercise, yes, it can reduce plaque buildup, but very vigorous activity can actually worsen plaque buildup. So for most people, doing light to moderate exercise is a reasonable option, but I do stress to my patients that jumping straight into high intensity interval workouts is not a good idea. Instead, if a person already has a reasonable base of fitness, then we can add high intensity interval trainings, but I wouldn't recommend doing it more than twice a week, again because we don't want to cause injury. And I do want to add an additional caution about how we interpret the results of the high intensity interval training study. We need to keep in mind the bigger picture. As I noted, participants in the study were taking medications to lower and control their LDL cholesterol levels. So those medications were doing their job. The average LDL cholesterol level in the study was 80 milligrams per deciliter, which is much lower compared to the average US population. And that 80 milligram per deciliter number is significant. Studies have shown that getting our LDL levels below that threshold can lead to a reduction in arterial plaque. Other studies have shown, by the way, that even lower levels, so below 60 milligrams per deciliter, are even better. From the PISA study, we can see that plaque begins to develop if LDL cholesterol is more than 50 to 60 milligrams per deciliter. That is true even if all other risk factors are optimal. So personally, I aim to have my LDL cholesterol below 60 milligrams per deciliter. But the overall point here I'm trying to make is this. The group in the high intensity interval workout study had relatively low levels of LDL cholesterol. So it's not scientifically accurate to assume that the same would happen if someone had high LDL cholesterol. That's not the population that the study tested. In other words, there's a lot of data that tells us that exercise is one piece of the puzzle. If we truly want to avoid plaque buildup in our arteries, we have to take a more holistic approach. And one of the other things that we absolutely need to talk about is diet. Specifically, I want to focus on the fat controversy. For decades, clinical medicine promoted low-fat diets to improve heart health, but recent data has added much-needed nuance. A large, randomized controlled trial called Cordioprev ran for seven years. It enrolled just over 1,000 participants who already had had a heart attack. So much like the HIT study that we looked at earlier in the video, these people were high risk. Half of them were assigned a low-fat diet, and the other group was given a Mediterranean diet that included unsaturated fats from foods such as avocado and extra virgin olive oil. Here's what happened. After seven years, the Mediterranean diet group had a roughly 25% lower risk of serious problems like strokes and heart attacks compared to the low-fat diet group. What's more, the authors published a separate study of the same group that asked a different question. Did the Mediterranean or low-fat diets reduce plaque in the arteries? Well, the low-fat diet had no effect, but the Mediterranean diet had a powerful impact. They found that plaque reduced by 3.65% after 5 years and continued to decline to 4.19% at the 7 year mark. Now the measure used here isn't the same one as the high intensity workout study, but notice the percentage. As we saw, a relatively small improvement in plaque can make a massive difference to our heart outcomes. So this study gives us strong evidence that the Mediterranean diet that includes unsaturated fats can be a powerful tool to reduce plaque and lower cardiovascular risks. Now I'm not saying that the Mediterranean diet is the right one for everyone, but there's loads of research that points us towards some key guidelines for any diet that we want to maximize our health. We want a diet that's rich in lean protein, we want to have whole fruits and and non-starchy vegetables. We should choose unsaturated fats found in sources like extra virgin olive oil, nuts and seeds, and we want to minimize sugar, salt, and saturated fats. And before moving on from diet, I want to mention some exciting new research linking a key nutrient to heart health. A recent study found that for people who already had plaque in their arteries, vitamin K2 supplements appeared to reduce it. Vitamin K2 is primarily found in fermented products such as fermented soy and cheese, so it can be difficult to get enough vitamin K2 from diet alone, which is why I chose to supplement with vitamin K2 included as part of microvitamin. But just because I take a supplement does in no way mean that you should as well. And if you'd like to get the full story on vitamin K2 and this compelling new research about how it connects to heart health, make sure to check out the link in the pinned comment. Besides exercise and diet, what else helps with 
plaque in our arteries? Well, another big one is getting our blood pressure under control, and there's a new target we should be aiming for. Higher blood pressures cause increased stress and damage to the lining of our blood vessels. It's similar to the way that forcing too much water through garden hoses would damage it over time. The stress and damage encourages plaque to build up. So what counts as high? What number should we be aiming for? Well, doctors used to recommend a target of 140 or less for our systolic blood pressure. That's the higher number that you'll see of the two numbers. But a massive recent study found that aiming for 120 is much better. It significantly reduces dangerous cardiac events like heart attacks among patients who were at higher risk. So ideally, we want to measure our blood pressure at home, and in a perfect world, it should be below 120. Now, we may accept slightly higher readings of around 130 for older adults. That's because we don't want to drop their blood pressure too low and cause them to feel dizzy and fall over. So if we want to keep plaque from our arteries, there's good evidence supporting these three interventions. The first one is exercise. The high intensity interval training study shows us that the right kind of exercise can reverse plaque buildup and help restore healthier blood vessels. The second is diet. In particular, the Mediterranean diet has shown the potential to reduce the volume of plaque buildup. And the third thing that we should look at is blood pressure. Now I also mentioned vitamin K2, so make sure to check out the next video here where I go through the research in detail, explain the dose I use, and whether I combine it with vitamin D3.